Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Uh, so today I'm looking at Bitwig because I've recently moved over to this DAW and absolutely loving it. It's such a creative uh, and inspiring tool. Uh, so I want to take a look at some stuff I've been playing around with, particularly Euclidean rhythms. Um, I love working with Euclidean rhythms. Just a really interesting way to kind of generate cool grooves in your music. Uh, so let's dive in. I'm going to show you a couple of things that you can do. Uh, one of the things I really like about Bitwig is the grid. Uh, we look at the note effects grid or the note grid in particular here. Uh, so let's jump in and we're going to get some stuff going. Right, so I'm starting with a completely blank project. I'm just going to bring in an instrument channel and let's just open up a browser. This machine integration is really great in Bitwig as well. Bring an instance of Polymer. Cool. So now we've just got a synth patch here. Let's just... There we go. I'm just going to take the filter down. We can open that up. We'll just turn on our metronome. Right, so we just got a chord playing over one bar. We can just clean this up and just loop this section. There. Cool. Uh, so the one way that you can get this in really quick and easy is by using some of the um, note effects uh, modules. The easiest way to get this in here is to do the note repeats and we can bring that in and you'll see there's this little Euclid uh, button hidden away in this note repeat section. If we play this back now it's going to repeat notes. If we go down to Euclidean we can then obviously dial in the pattern length. So Euclidean if you don't know it's basically you have a set length and then the algorithm tries to fit notes in as evenly spaced as possible according to the density. So you'll see here we have five notes in 16 now. If we play that back you can hear what that sounds like. Dial up the density. There you go. So that's an easy way to do it. But now in this case, I don't really want to be doing um, repeated notes. I want to rather be doing Euclidean sort of modulation, uh, getting the rhythm from that Euclidean rhythm into modulation destinations inside of the synth. Uh, so we're going to actually just create a little note grid to do this for us. Uh, so let's just open up our note grid here. And we can pop in here and take a look at what we have set up here. Uh, so we're not going to need any of this stuff. We can actually just get rid of this, I believe. Or we might just leave it there and then just work around it. Um, so I need to get triggers, uh, two sets of triggers. One which is going to be the quantization amount or like the total amount. And then one which is going to be the amount of triggers that we're going to fit inside of that section. So a really easy way to do this is to just bring in some triggers modules. We're going to bring in the triggers. We're going to duplicate this. So we've got our 16 is going to be our amount that we are quantizing by. And we can say fit five notes into that 16th and spread them out evenly. Problem with this is uh, if we just do this as is, it's going to be out of sync. So we need to quantize these correctly. And we're going to bring in a clock quantize to basically force these five notes into a 16th grid and we can just connect these up like so and now what we can use is um, basically send this to a, a MIDI CC output which then can be routed into our synth now to do that we're going to actually just insert an envelope here so we can get sort of a, a bit of a decay on those uh, on those triggers we'll just use the AD Turn down the attack on this one. So we can send the gates from this section into our envelope to trigger that. And we can also just uh, bring in a oscilloscope so you can see what's happening here as well. Let's set that too slow. Right, and then the output of our envelope, the control signal of the envelope, is going to go to 
an IO port and we're going to send this to a MIDI CC out. I'll just set this to something random up at the top. Let's go with 85 and we'll just put our CC in there. And that is now sending the output of our envelope to our MIDI CC out. If we want to see what's happening with these gates, we can just plug this one in here. And also plug the output of our envelope here to see what those are looking like. And you can see we're only triggering one there. We need to set that to trigger from the gate input, not from the note inputs uh, coming into this channel. So now that we've disabled that, you see we'll have nice little triggers on each of those gates. And that's being routed to the MIDI output. So all we need to do now is basically bring in a MIDI CC modulator on our synth and we want to open this up and make sure that this is set to cc85 like we have on the output of our note effects and now we can use this to modulate stuff so let's add a little bit of modulation to the cutoff we'll bring the cutoff down and take a listen to what we have now Now let's play around with the amount of notes that we have. So four, be every every quarter note. We can duck that down to three. Let's go up to a higher number of this. We can also uh, basically stack these up on top of each other with multiple different rhythms as well. So to do that, it's pretty simple. We're just going to copy this whole thing. We'll just take this, duplicate this, and then set this to MIDI CC86, for example. Then we come back into the synth section here. We can duplicate this modulator, the CC one. We'll duplicate this one and set this one to CC86. So now we can apply this to the cutoff as well so that they will actually stack on top of one another uh, when the notes are playing the same thing. So you're getting much brighter now, but now what we can do is adjust the amounts for this. So let's go with a higher number for this one. We'll go with nine there, for example. pretty cool and this obviously applies to anything that's nested inside of the synth as well so if we go and decide we want to add in some effects here we could add in a reverb for example just go with the bitwig reverb and we can duplicate this once again and let's set this to 87 and once again duplicate this so we have an additional cc input there uh, set this one to 87 once again and now we could use this to, say, push the mix of our reverb up. Might be off screen for you guys. Uh, let's uh, reduce the number of these ones down to, let's say, five. So now we've got some of that Euclidean rhythm being applied to the mix on our reverb instead. And then obviously you could also stack other modulators on top of this too. So if we take, uh, let's just delete the mod wheel input there. We'll add in a, uh, just a classic LFO. And let's set this one to a dotted note. Dotted quarters would be fine. We'll add that to our cutoff as well. And that's bipolar. That's fine. Let's take a listen to that. That's 
that's pretty cool. And let's just add the last bit of spice to this loop that we've got here. Let's just stack this voice by two, I think. Uh, and then we can add in a voice stacking modulator for this. We'll add that to the pitch, just add in 10. 10 I should say and then we'll apply the stacking to the panning as well that's pretty cool and now we can just change these up whenever we want Cool. Um, so another way you can apply the same concept is to note triggers as well. So I'm going to close this down. Let's uh, bring in a second channel and we're going to bring up a drum machine. So now typically the drum machine initially when I started using this, I thought you're just going to drag samples in, which you can do. But what you can also do is just click here and actually load in one of the modules like the kick, for example. So we'll load in a kick, we can load in a snare or let's say clap on this one. Uh, we'll load up a hi-hat on this one. And let's load up a tom on that one. Okay, so now we've got a kick, a hat, a clap and a tom. And we can go and insert a note FX or note grid again, I should say, uh, before this. So now we can do some Euclidean stuff with this as well. So let's, in this one, we're going to just set this up to be monophonic. Let's bring the, all the way down to mono. And once again, I'll run through this from the beginning. Triggers. Bring in a trigger module. Uh, let's go with the quantize again. Duplicate that. So our first one's going to go in and that one's going to go in there. And let's just double check what we're getting here. Display, oscilloscope. Okay, so let's bump this up to 16 now. There we go, we're getting four in 16. Three in 16. So that's working correctly. Now what we're gonna do now is instead of outputting to a CC value like we did before, we're gonna basically send this to IO I'm going to go to note out and we're going to send this gate signal that we have here to our note out on this one and then make sure that we are setting this to C1 because that is where our kick is at. Okay, so from here we can go ahead and duplicate this again and we can set this up to C sharp, which is gonna be our, or C sharp one, which is gonna be our clap. So now we've got an issue here. What's happening now is it's basically sticking that uh, clap on the, on the first beat every single time. Uh, and if we're gonna go with like a two, for example. I kind of want that on the offbeat instead. So what I'll do there is we're going to bring a phase in uh, and what we're going to do is turn off the phase for this one. So it's going to take the phase from this input here instead, not from the uh, system phase. And what we can do now is go into the phase section here and bring in the phase shift module, connect these up. And I'll show you what happens here if we go back to display again, oscilloscope and You'll see bringing the phase in. Slow again. So this phase here is basically determining how far down the uh, triggers line that's going. It's basically the speed at which the triggers are going to be going. Um, but we want to shift that slightly so that we can move those claps onto a different part of that sequence. Uh, if we bring this down here, now you'll see if I change the phase of this these are no longer line, lining up um, so there's going to be a full 360 if you go all the way down to 100 percent we want to 
get 90 degrees out of phase so that we can shift that clap onto the second beat. To do that, you're going to just, we can just type in here, minus 25% or just plus 25%. If we play this back now and listen to where the clap is in relation to the kick. Oh wait, we need to also just hook this up to the triggers module there. There we go. So now we can adjust this as we need to, as an offset. Bring this one in here. And we'll send this to our hats maybe. And let's duplicate this one. We can get the tom in two. We'll just shift that up to D sharp. that one also in seven but we'll change the phase for this one there you have it so that's a pretty basic uh start to things obviously you can go and save this out and use this uh again wherever you want as a sort of starting point there's a lot more that you can do with adjusting these triggers and stuff to kind of create even more complex um, sequences as well uh, but if you want to get a little bit of that kind of uh, Euclidean feel into your stuff, this is uh, a great way to kind of mess around with this. Uh, I particularly like this for the first example, just uh, sort of adding a little bit of movement to a pad sound. Um, it works really nicely in that regard and gives you that same kind of feel as the note repeats, but without having to repeat those notes constantly. <laughs> And there you go. So I think I'll probably be doing a lot more of these videos with Bitwig. Uh, just like I said, I've been finding this super, super inspiring. Um, and I'm kind of figuring out stuff more and more as I go along. So as I do, I'll be sure to record some videos for you guys uh, on how to use Bitwig and some little tips and tricks that I come up with along the line. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll catch you soon. Right here at Maruna Music. Till then, take care. Cheers.